this is uh, my philosophy on art, I guess. I kind of feel art needs explaining a lot, just listening to other people talk about uh, philosophy and politics and other matters and people being confused about how uh, art's used to influence our culture and uh, how art is a tool and how to recognize even what art is. It's difficult to set out to explain these things to people if they don't have the foundational knowledge of what art is and, and even for a lot of artists I think it takes a long time to really understand what art is. Uh, it's really something someone has to dedicate their life to in order to really grasp how important and how difficult uh, art is. So this is a uh, what art is, what art isn't, and in general, the artist is a deviant. The artist is a deviant. The whole point of being an artist is to create and offer a unique perspective of values that does not fit with the status quo. To form a question and test that question's inherent value, to open people's minds to new things, created things, it's about creation, creativity. That said, if you can't find another soul that recognizes it as art, it's not art. If you can't sell it, it's not art. No value of any sort, monetary or useful, it's not art. Egomaniac artists who think their uniqueness and their deviant geniuses, so far removed from any such estimation or audience worthiness, are only fooling themselves. They need to look up the definitions of art and fine art and aesthetic value in the dictionary and understand what art is and what art is not. What art is. Before I get into what art isn't, I first have to take a few minutes to explain what it is. Bear with me if you're the type of person who hates listening to people talk condescendingly and presumptively about art. That's a big reason why I'm making this statement. You have to define your terms if you want to discuss any subject in detail. So first, you have to realize that art, like any other subject, isn't special. It doesn't get to escape scrutiny simply because everyone has unique perspectives towards the subject. You can't tell me what's cool. You can't tell me what's funny. You can tell me what art is. Art, as a subject, is definable. So let's start with the definition of the word art. I'll try to get through these uh, fairly quickly, just because it probably isn't that entertaining for me to read through the dictionary. It's more entertaining the uh, follow-up. Art noun. Number one, human ability to make things. Creativity of man as distinguished, distinguished from the world of nature. Two, skill, craftsmanship, and then it goes on to say any specific skill or its application. Four, any craft trade or profession or its principles, any profession. Now this next one is where we start to see a more intuitive definition. Number five, creative work or its principles, a making or doing of things that display form or beauty and unusual perception. That's very important, right? Unusual perception. The artist is a deviant. Anyway, art includes painting, sculpture, architecture, music, literature, drama, and dance, etc. But this definition, seemingly fitting to how we commonly see the word, does not exclude all the previous definitions. See also fine art. We'll get into that later. Six, any branch of creative work. Seven, products of creative work. Eight, pictorial or decorative material. And here's my favorite definition. Nine, A, archaic, learning, B, a branch of learning, C, plural, the liberal arts, literature, music, philosophy, etc. As distinguished from the sciences, and, and I believe this is purely because creative arts must be somehow separated from discovered ones uh, when we're talking about them. But that doesn't mean that the practice of science itself isn't definition three, any specific skill or its application. And there are a couple more definitions, too, that I'm omitting for expediency's sake, and I'm not omitting them because they don't conform to my views. I maintain that all the actual definitions of the word discussed are pertinent to understanding the subject. So most importantly, to understand the role of art in our world, to understand what art actually is in an educated manner, you have to include the subjective values of the actual dictionary definitions of the word. 
Art by itself is everything created by humankind through effort. Art is inventions. The scientific method is an art form. The architecture around you, the pencil sharpener on the wall, the traditions of your people, the subjects you learn in school, the music you hear, everything that humans created in this world that humans value is art. A formulaic way to put it is, a human created, another person valued, and it becomes this concept we call art. It's a big, big concept. Now, that I've made that clear, you will probably hear, like I do, many in the field who feel entitled to redefine the word. You will hear the word used in narrow-minded ways that conform to narrow-minded views of art. For example, take a look at the term fine art as defined by the dictionary. This is shorter. Fine art, originally considered purely aesthetic as distinguished from the useful arts, because inventions, technology is art. We created it. One, any of the art forms that include drawing, literature, music, dramatic art, or dancing, usually used in plural. Two, artistic objects as painting, sculpture, etc., collectively an exhibition of fine art. And most importantly, three, any highly creative or intricate skill. So fine art is more about your mastery of skill, like as an artist, uh, you'd be exhibiting something like a painting that's fine art because it's showing off your level of skill in something. It, even though, you know, cutting a two-by-four for a, a, a building project, it's still kind of art because we had to create the two-by-four and how that two-by-four measurement of wood is used in building something, you know, it's pretty much everything touched by human fingers is art in a lot of ways. So that's the distinction between art and fine art, typically. Fine art, then, is usually what people mean when they are stating their estimation of something, like when they say, now that is a piece of art. And that's fine coming from someone who isn't educated about art. They can be forgiven for not realizing what they meant to say is that's fine art. The problem is that the art educational system has failed so many artists who have paid good money to learn about and practice art because it's not just casually interested consumers of art who confuse these terms. It's an epidemic that pervades art schools all the way up to the very top authorities of those institutions. The subject art as used by these institutions seems to be nothing more than a money-making scheme hatched by elitist-minded art connoisseurs. Art and fine art, as terms, are used as a kind of high-class or upper-class elitist currency for determining aesthetic value and cultural worth. On some sort of documentary, some person who presumably speaks for all artists wearing probably a suit and tie, or maybe the artist's beret with his painter's palette, walking on the beach or through a museum or, or some sort of backdrop like that, maybe highlighting the architecture in society or sculptures in a museum, starts blathering on about what it is, what art is, they being apparently an authority on such a thing. What they're actually talking about isn't art. It has its own word, aesthetics. They presume to define art as its values. Beauty and other wondrous theories that they can then sound intellectually brilliant given commentary on. While you're getting the wool pulled over your eyes, they neglect to actually define art itself. They're giving estimation of their own values. Giving commentary that sounds good because it's simply reinforcing their own chosen perspective on it. You're telling yourself, I haven't thought of it that way, and, th and then you're telling yourself that makes sense, the way that they say that. This is purely a confirmation bias. You are given an assumption and then ascribing value to each following idea that supports it. And that is why I understand what I'm saying is considered inflammatory. It flies in the face of how most people are taught. That's why I understand that in our current uneducated state, anything that I say that attempts to shed light on this is dismissed quickly. It's confirmation bias. And now we're at the point of what art isn't. 
One of the typical stances people take in explaining art is instead to go into a treatise on how to look at art, followed by examples of what they personally consider art and why. This obviously includes viewpoints that they share with others. Does this legitimacy by committee determine what art is? Or does that one person's perception of how art should be viewed define what art is? The answer to both of these questions is no. This misconception is disconcertingly detrimental to the utility that is inherent in the word art. Art is actually a very broad term and it is broad for a reason. Art is the result of a creative endeavor, not an egotistical estimation of value. It's not elitist currency. I know that it's news to someone that art is not determined by their inborn and somehow superior sense of style. All that is is egomania. Being an artist isn't a license to define the world's understanding of the word art. It's only the license to pursue influencing the world's sense of value with their own. Take, for instance, the word aesthetics, which is one of those words commonly substituted with the word art. Aesthetics concerns itself with what beauty is. And naturally, those who want to define their own views to represent what's beautiful, they substitute words like beautiful with the word art. Fine art, which isn't as broad a term, does have some connotation with aesthetics, but still, the true definition, if you understand it, of fine art is a mastery of skill, not of aesthetic beauty. The aesthetic value is just a byproduct of that marriage from form and function that only a masterful skill can exhibit. When documentaries or other forms of commentary are given about the subject, they naturally begin to ask the questions of why it is important or what it means. These are examples of the aesthetic values of the broad term art to its culture and time, or the aesthetic values of the level of mastery exhibited in fine art. They are not definitive of art itself, just because you can't come to terms with the subject. So here's what art isn't. Art isn't a set of predetermined values expressed by the cream of society. Art isn't determined by a panel of worthy judges. Art isn't the way you, the artist, sees it. Art isn't what it means to you, the artist. Art isn't the scale by which you, the artist, weigh your standards and values. If you're going to explain what art is, then you should set out from the beginning to explain the difference between what art is and your philosophy and set of values. You have to draw that line for people because that's what art is. Art is what those create. Art is about creation. Value is intrinsic in art, but art has to find its audience. Art is witnessed. Art is about experience. Art is the material produced, not someone's egotistical concept of worth. Art isn't personal, it's worldly. Art doesn't belong to you. It belongs to anyone. Art doesn't belong to everyone. It belongs to someone. Art isn't what you say it is or exist because you, the artist, can perceive it. Art is what it is. The human ability to make things. Creativity of man as distinguished from the world of nature. That was the dictionary definition number one. The artist is a deviant. If you tell someone what art is, they aren't recognizing it as art. They are simply agreeing with you, temporarily. Telling people what art is doesn't make it art. For instance, if someone is looking at a sunset and another person walks up to them and says, that sunset is art, isn't it? If the person looking at it says, no, it doesn't fit the definition of art because it wasn't created by man, so it's not art, then guess what? It's not art. But here's where it gets confusing. If the person agrees with the other asking the question, that the out, then the outside deviant perspective, the very idea itself, is the art. Because it was a concept created by a man and found an audience through the inherent or perceived value of it, of the idea that that sunset is art. The basic criteria to which artists provide the art they created is through deviating perspectives that once it, the art, becomes recognized as having value to the context of someone else's perspective, it becomes art. 
Art requires an audience, and without recognition, in the smallest of cases, a single person to assign value to it. It is not art. And back to my original point, what an artist provides is a deviant perspective. An artist exposes to you your values and makes you question them because of his or her values plus their art. Here's a fairly lengthy quote from Mark McLuhan's The Medium is the Massage. The poet, the artist, the sleuth, whoever sharpens our perception, tends to be antisocial, rarely well adjusted. He cannot go along with currents and trends. A strange bond often exists among antisocial types and their power to see environments as they really are. This need to interface to confront environments with a certain antisocial power is manifest in the famous story, The Emperor's New Clothes. Well-adjusted courtiers, having vested interests, saw the emperor as beautifully appointed. The antisocial brat, unaccustomed to the old environment, clearly saw that the emperor ain't got nothing on. The new environment was clearly visible to him. Art is about offering something new. Art is about sharing something different. Art is offering deviancy from a norm. That's why you can't slap a label on something and expect it to stand on its label's merit. Art is like rock and roll. It's either recognized as rock and roll or it's recognized as something the mainstream cooked up and slapped a rock and roll label on. People recognize deviancy. Instead, you get boy bands or pseudo acts like Milli Vanilli. Art's the same way. It's a deviancy from the norm. It's about damn the man, not buy into the status quo. It's about challenging perceptions, not reinforcing your assumptions. Art isn't more of the same, it is something different. Something creative, created, new. Art is a deviation from what you thought. From an outsider, from thinking outside the box, art reveals your values and pushes them aside or offers different values that might change the way you see things. Art is supposed to expose monotony and expose things that are ingrained and accepted as not necessarily worth remaining that way. Thomas A. Edison said, To my mind, the old masters are not art. Their value is in their scarcity. Art requires an audience. You can't show an audience what they already see and expect them to recognize it as art. It requires a deviant perspective. Art is offered as a question. It is a deviant perspective offered to be witnessed and considered. Whether it is agreed with or not, it must be recognized to exist. If the point of being an artist is not deviancy, then art does not require an audience. So as art is this conceptual subject that exists for humanity's sake, fluid and loosely definable by the values inherent in any culture at any point in time, it does not get to become elitist currency. It will never be the standard of beauty or anything else. Art is what, in retrospect, colors our understanding of humanity's creativity. That is why art is understood only in retrospect as art movements. We can see our own values as they were. We can see the world of the past through godlike eyes. Castles and knights in shining armor, barbarians in pants, order and machinations, increasing Nazi living space. Our values are in flux, just as our creativity is unlimited by elitist assignments of value. The artist is not the status quo. The artist is the deviant, and always will be. There are always going to be people who try to redefine art by their own values. It just shows their ignorance to understanding or perceiving what art actually is. It's sold that way. It's taught that way. It's nothing but commerce to those people. They will never grasp how important it actually is, nor how much of a tool of change it is. Those same people that want to define it by their values are doing so to censor and limit it. This next section, instead of calling it understanding the role of art in life, I sort of dissect the word understanding to what is more true in this sense is standing beneath the role of art in life. Standing beneath the role of art in life. 
the job of the artist is to show people what they aren't seeing. The artist holds up a reflection of what's valued for the status quo and shows them, us, exactly what it is we value and what we neglect to. Gangster rap and shock rock are every bit as artistic and worthy of merit as classical music. A resistance front for rock and roll was inevitable, just the same. Personally, I want you to wake up and realize that cartoonists among artists are potent, dangerous artists, or at least significant in the grand scheme of things. Wherever there is debate or oppression, there will be satirical propaganda. Lately, cartoonists have been sold as commercial artists. They've been labeled as production line employees with page rates. Advertisers of sorts, performance artists, entertainers that use superheroes as their medium. They've been conditioned to believe that this profession has to fit into a certain mold. Wear a suit, find an editor, and kiss their ass. For this reason, it is thought of by the elitists who invest in valuable art as low art. Cartoonists prop up brands and sell out the integrity of their own art form. How much money has been made in the movie industry with the ready-made products of the comics industry? How much of that money has been reinvested into the comics industry? Is there a comic book store in your state? How many? If only there were more integrity in the comics business. The cartoonists should hit you over the head with their work. Artists suffer the indignation of a world that can't see things the way they do. A comedian will make you break down your cool, calm, and collected self into a laughing fool. A writer might make you cry. An artist can't help but share their passions explosively. Art is a release, and at the same time it is a cry for freedom from repressive dreams. Art's what breaks us free from the realities and fabrications that narrow our path. Every invention and every escaped thought, every breath of an artist, is a beating heart pushing against the world that confines us. Forever pressing for the tables to turn, and then carry on flipping like the hands of a clock, all set in motion by the passionates of mankind, the artists. Here's a fairly lengthy quote by uh, Terence McKenna. We do not fight back against the dehumanizing values that are handed down as control icons. Control is not your friend. Culture is for other people's convenience and the convenience of various institutions, churches, companies, tax collection schemes, what have you. It is not your friend, it insults you, it disempowers you, it uses and abuses you. None of us are well treated by culture. Yet we glorify the creative potential of the individual, the rights of the individual. We understand the felt presence of experience is what is most important, but the culture is a perversion. It fetishizes objects, creates consumer mania. It preaches endless forms of false happiness, endless forms of false understanding in the form of squirrely religion and silly cults. It invites people to diminish themselves and dehumanize themselves by behaving like machines, meme processors of memes passed down from Madison Avenue and Hollywood and what have you. How do we fight back? How do we fight back? It's a question worth answering. I think by creating art. Art. Man was not put on this planet to toil in the mud. Or the God that puts us on this planet to toil in the mud is no God that I want to have any part of. It's some sort of Gnostic demon. It is some sort of cannibalistic demi-urge that should be thoroughly renounced and rejected. By putting the art pedal to the metal, we really, I think, maximize our humanness and become much more necessary and incomprehensible to the machines. End quote. That was taken from a YouTube video called Terence McKenna, Culture is Not Your Friend. To feel, to need, to love is to take a step out of reality and not feel guilty for trying. That is, to tread the path of an artist. Mankind will no longer exist without an artist. Here's a quote from Penn Jillette. Pleasing the audience is the most important thing in the world, but do not compromise in any way to please them. In a certain sense, the definition of art. End quote. I've had that hanging on my wall for some years now. The greatest sin for an artist is for their art to lack integrity. 
authenticity, sincerity. He must entertain the idea that boy bands are not themselves the artists responsible for the values they reinforce. Their producer is. The producer that dictated that this young man is going to be the shy sensitive one or this other's going to be the bad boy. And we're going to push celebrity and superficiality and consumerism onto little boys and girls. There is nothing more American than rock and roll, except the distortion of its message. There is nothing more anti-government than art, except America's artificial inflation and distortion of art's value in society. Art will always be distorted by the lens of culture, because art will always be trying to show a culture what it fails to see. The artist is a deviant. This quote's from uh, Tommy Chong from uh, Cheech and Chong. I've also had this hanging on my wall for a long time. When you have such a huge culture that doesn't have anything, they don't have a spokesman, they don't have someone singing about their culture, they don't have someone making jokes about their culture, and then you can open up that door to get to those people. It's such a huge audience. I find that very inspirational. It should be for any artist who's looking to become successful. This illustrates how much impact an artist can have and how culture is built by the artists in society. The old guard didn't build the culture. The status quo who won't let you go didn't build the culture. The old men and tyrants don't create a thing. They guard against the new. Institutions are instituted. They protect the world from change and can't let go of their world view. They don't hand over the reins to someone too new. The dragon doesn't create its riches. It plunders and hoards its treasure. Real treasure, of course, is art and books, but that's another issue. And it doesn't do anything with it but guard it. That's the mythology of the dragon in my mind. Cahill Gibran said, Art is a step from what is obvious and well known towards what is arcane and concealed. End quote. So here's where things get a little weird with me. Uh, this is how I define the dragon. The dragon to me is a concept of something that exists in society and in culture uh, throughout history. It's not just the mythology, it's what the mythology means. The dragon of mythology represents the old guard in the status quo, the old fighting to keep things they've earned. Keeping things from ever changing, they accumulate and sit on a hoard of gold. The dragon eating its tail is the cycle of empire, where power and wealth always consumes any real notion of change. In opposition to the dragon is the phoenix, which represents the rebirth portion of the revolution that is the cycle of empire, which follows a total destruction and a world in ashes. The dragon is the corruption of the rise to power, the well-meaning initiate being corrupted by the system instead of changing the system, the goldfish climbing the waterfall to emerge as the dragon once it's reached the top. The dragon is not the creativity and optimism of the young, it is the pushback and pessimism of the old. Government is the dragon, and its most ugly is said to be draconian. The artist in society, the deviant, is the wise old man or wizard, which does not enter into the direct fight against the dragon, but mentors the heroes to oppose it by giving them the tools to do so. They don't take direct action or pick up the sword, they only show the way to salvation. Merlin Gandalf. Jesus Christ even fit this archetype. And they are said to speak in riddle or parable. You give up on the idea that others can understand when you begin to. It's them that have to be convinced it's not a riddle. Clean-shaven superconformists in suit and tie do not. They are the dragon, and psychopaths often. In my mind, the dragon is both the sinful, corrupting nature of government and the biology of our species that maintains such a thing. The human nature seeking out all their sins mechanized into a working system, and the role of Mother Nature to give us sociopaths to take advantage of our sinful natures. The dragon is a psychopath in a suit and tie, and the dragon is the human instinct to put him on the throne and condemn rational thought and emotion for this diminished sense of responsibility 
and promises of evil men. The dragon is culture's lasting and reoccurring oppression. The dragon is the culmination of humanity's sinful nature into government and a war. The dragon is as old as humanity and guarded. Willie Nelson sang, You can't make a record if you ain't got nothing to say. You can't play music if you don't know nothing to play. End quote. I believe if people knew what art truly is, this existence would be a peaceful and wondrous experience. Not only would our differences become apparent, they would unite us and be celebrated. Our struggles would become transparent to all and appreciated. The artist exists because many lack the fortitude to feel. The artist is a spring of passions. Ringo Starr sang, you got to pay your dues if you want to sing the blues. Listening to other struggling artists, no matter what their art form, musicians or cartoonists or whatever, I often empathize with their confusion and frustrations when asked, why can't you make it? Why can't you just do it? Non-artists don't think the same way artists do. They follow instructions, get a degree, get an hourly wage a job. But with the frustrated artist, what I commonly think they are trying to concern themselves with is putting their art in context with their world with the expectations of their profession. And they're at a loss of how to communicate their passions and values with an unreceptive status quo. It is a totally legitimate worry. They understand that they're trying to show people things that aren't accepted yet as instructive or even valuable ways of seeing things. Artists can find it extremely counterintuitive to be forced into the necessities of a living wage and a systematic status system that falls in line with the status quo. They know instinctively that they can't change culture from inside it, sitting in a cubicle and reading their memos. Some people may legitimately come to the conclusion that art hasn't been rule-breaking or groundbreaking in a long time. I totally understand this sentiment because art is in a constant flux of being taken or authenticated by the status quo, but cannot be by the very nature of it. The artist remains a deviant in the shadows. When you're young, art is something of yourself you want to show off to get gratification for your perception and celebrate your growing ego. When you mature, you realize that art is something of the world that you want to expose at your own expense. I don't think it's a stretch to say that every change that takes place in this world was created and it was artists that did the creating. Integrity is at the mercy of praise. As Stefan Molyneux puts it, the vast majority of people to, do not think about their beliefs from the logical start. What they do is they say, what will cause me the least amount of grief and get me the most acceptance? End quote. Here's one from Larkin Rose. A few things that I think are worth mentioning, one has to do with the concept of organizations and you have this movement, and our organization stands for this, let's adhere to history. How many individuals can you name who stood up and say, this is what I believe? I know that it goes against the grain. I know it goes against conventional wisdom. It goes against what people are comfortable with. But here's what I believe in. And we still remember them hundreds of years later. There are lots of them. There's a huge list of people who did that. Now, how many organizations are there that did that? Because as soon as there is an organization, as soon as you speak, you're representing this little club, so you have to make sure that what you say and what you do falls in line with this little club, it's instantly a limiting factor. And if somebody is going to say, oh, well, don't say that because you're now affiliated with us, well then, I'm not affiliated with you. And well, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, in the case of the artists, I don't want them to represent reality because I have that via my own telescopes. I want and I need the artist to take me to new places, and the new place that Van Gogh took me is not the sky as it, as it is, but the sky as he felt it. And the more of us that feel the universe, the better off we will be in this world." End quote. Art and philosophy are at their heart against oppression. That's why government and religion are under constant scrutiny. 
you cannot hand off to government or religion the authority to determine a context for free expression, nor can either determine what art is or which art is going to be purchased and displayed. Art tax, this notion of an art tax, is the biggest assault on legitimate art that ever existed. The two words should not be allowed side by side. John 3.21 But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his works have been carried out in God. The ultra-rich in society buy up all the fine art, or valuable antiques. That's who becomes invested in its value, unfortunately. People who have little interest in changing culture, but consider themselves the authority on civilized behavior and the finer things in life. It's inevitable that wealth accumulation at the top of a class society will invest in and appreciate and inflate the art that to them represented status through old values. This is a currency worth more than money. They control the culture, more or less, by controlling the art appreciation. Its value is inherent in its culture, cultural significance to them, to their worldview. It has little to do with their understanding of craftsmanship or mastery of skill, and nothing to do with any recognition for creativity. Elitism is close to pseudo-intellectualism, its feigned ownership of intellect. Art's market value is under the heel of social Darwinism. It always has been. But as they say, there's no accounting for taste. All that is valuable now is not all that will be valuable in the future. They can't corner the market on art completely. There will always be artists to defend art. Eleanor Roosevelt said, Do what you feel in your heart to be right, for you'll be criticized anyway. You'll be damned if you do, damned if you don't. This rock and roll, it's for the devil people used to say, any movement begins in opposition to an accepted norm. It questions it, and it, it questions your adherence to it. An artist has to have integrity and present themselves from the heart and with honesty to the entire world. Their work must be authentic and original. It must spring from their passions and devotions. Once that work has found its audience, it will have an inextinguishable impact. This notorious B.I.G. street naming controversy that popped up in the news pisses me off in so many ways. Any stance against paying homage to the man, no matter how you color it, is anti-artist. It's anti-art. Here's a collection of quotes from Tupac Shakur. I'm a reflection of the community. Reality is wrong. Dreams are for real. All I am trying to do is survive and make good out of the dirty, nasty, unbelievable lifestyle that they gave me. End quote. The definition of contemporary, adjective, one. Happening or beginning now or in recent times, two. Existing or happening in the same time period, from the same time period. So when you ask people in general what they think of contemporary art, you are going to get a bunch of stupid, meaningless answers, like anything that elicits a response, etc., that doesn't mean that art is meaningless. It means that putting it into that term, contemporary art, is. It's way too broad to be correctly estimated. It's a general lack of understanding what art is. I think it shows exactly how art is peddled as an elitist currency instead of what it actually is. People who aren't even artists declare that they've got their finger on the pulse of it because they have an elitist, high-class, intellectual attitude. Statements made, like, Lou Reed brought the avant-garde into rock and roll, are ignorant of what rock and roll means culturally in favor of degrading terms like avant-garde. I just hate that term avant-garde. It's completely redundant to label art avant-garde. It says this art is innovative. No shit. Is it creative? Is it art? Fucking presumptuous morons. Postmodern, another idiotic, derogatory maneuver to move art into a definable product of the aristocratic elitists. This art is tomorrow's art. Yeah, is it? Is it really? Or are you just cheerleading the art you like? What direction art is moving in? We'll look at the art with hindsight. Realize that pseudo-intellectualism 
continues to try and redefine art for the layman. Real artists are authentic and true to themselves and their audience. They have no need to label what they do with words that they bought in school, in art school. They have no need of being Harvard artists. I've been giving examples of deviants, rock and rollers, poets, comedians, philosophers. All of them are kicking and screaming against the norm, imprisoning them. Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, these guys are just an older generation of thinkers. In the future, they will be talking about Joe Rogan, Russell Brand, Jello Biafra, Henry Rollins, Immortal Technique, comedians and rock and rollers, rappers, artists, all. Don't call me avant-garde, contemporary, postmodern. Don't call me any of that shit. I'm just an artist. I will not be remembered by any other meaningless notion other people want to peddle as art. I was not art. I was an artist. I was not esteemed. I was not valuable. I was simply a soul of change. I want to be remembered as an artist. Let all the posers be commercialized and trivialized and sold off. Let them be made into gold-plated plastic trophies, elevating their own acceptance. Art is a revolutionary act. It cannot be called a revolutionary movement. What part of the revolutionary cycle does it represent? All of them. Here are a few quotes that you might find interesting that I believe support everything that I've said here. I hope you can see how they relate to what I've written. Ask yourself if you would comprehend them in the same way having not just read my essay or heard it. I hope you enjoy them. Art for art's sake is a philosophy of the well-fed. Frank Lloyd Wright. The arts are an even better barometer of what is happening in our world than the stock market or the debates in Congress. Hendrik Willem von Loon. Every creator painfully experiences the chasm between his inner vision and its ultimate expression. Isaac Bashifus Singer. What art offers is space, a certain breathing room for the spirit. John Updike. Of all lies, art is the least untrue. Gustav Flaubert. Art is either plagiarism or revolution. Paul Gagin. An artist is never ahead of his time, but most people are far behind theirs. Edgar Maurice. Trying to force creativity is never good. Sarah McLaughlin. I think an artist's responsibility is more complex than people realize. Jody Foster. Culture is the arts elevated to a set of beliefs. Thomas Wolfe. The more horrifying this world becomes, the more art becomes abstract. Ellen Key. It is through art and through art only that we can realize our perfection. Oscar Wilde. If art is to nourish the roots of our culture, society must set the artist free to follow his vision wherever it takes him. John F. Kennedy. Art raises its head where creeds relax. Friedrich Nietzsche. To my mind, the old masters are not art. Their value is in their scarcity. Thomas A. Edison. Religion is the masterpiece of the art of animal training, for it trains people as to how they shall think. Arthur Schopenhauer. Art is always and everywhere the secret confession and at the same time, the immortal movement of its time, Karl Marx. Art is making something out of nothing and selling it, Frank Zappa. Art is the lie that enables us to realize the truth, Pablo Picasso. The enemy of art is the absence of limitations, Orson Welles. 
Perhaps it's good for one to suffer. Can an artist do anything if he's happy? Would he ever want to do anything? What is art, after all, but a protest against the horrible inclemency of life? Aldous Huxley. No great art has ever been made without the artist having known danger. Rainer Maria Rilke, or Rilke, I don't know. I think art is the only thing that's spiritual in the world, and I refuse to be forced to believe in other people's interpretations of God. I don't think anybody should be. No one person can own the copyright to what God means. Marilyn Manson Only through art can we emerge from ourselves and know what another person sees. Marcel Proust being an artist is dragging your innermost feelings out, giving a piece of yourself, no matter in which art form, in which medium. Henry Rollins. In a decaying society, art, if it is truthful, must also reflect decay. And unless it wants to break faith with its social function, art must show the world as changeable and help to change it. Ernest Fisher. No art can be noble which is incapable of expressing thought, and no art is capable of expressing thought which does not change. John Ruskin. True ease in writing comes from art, not chance, as those who move easiest have learned to dance. Alexander Pope. The writer, when he is also an artist, is someone who admits what others don't dare reveal. Elia Kazan. If you do not breathe through writing, if you do not cry out in writing, or sing in writing, then don't write, because our culture has no use for it. Aeneas Nin. It is the function of art to renew our perception. What we are familiar with, we cease to see. The writer shakes up the familiar scene, and as if by magic, we see a new meaning in it. Aeneas Nin. Art does not reproduce what we see, rather it makes us see. Paul Klee. All good art is an indiscretion. Tennessee Williams. I don't get my authority from this pre-existing paradigm, which is quite narrow and only serves a few people. I look elsewhere for alternatives that might be of service to humanity. Russell Brand. If we can engage that feeling and change things, why wouldn't we? Why is that naive? Why is that not my right because I am an actor? I mean, I've taken the right. I don't need that right from you. I don't need that right from anybody. I'm taking it. Russell Brand. Learn the rules so that you know how to break them properly. Dalai Lama. Also. Learn the rules like a pro so that you can break them like an artist. Pablo Picasso. Every act of creation is first an act of destruction. Pablo Picasso. You never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, build a new model. That makes the existing model obsolete. R. Buckminster Fuller. It's the end of that collection of quotes. Here's another from Stephen Mullen. I couldn't do what I do if I was afraid of offending people or upsetting people. I mean, that's why philosophy tends to stagnate the most of any science, because philosophy tends to upset and offends the most people. But I could really give a rat's ass about the people who are upset and offended by what I argue. They don't even show up on my radar. All I care about is... Am I illuminating a path to less violence, particularly towards children? End quote. 